does play that role full time or part time. What do you see the advantages of Charlie in that role, particularly uh, now that there's a DH? Right. I think. Uh, well, first of all, experienced major league hitter uh, has been there before, comfortable in that spot. Uh, gets on. I mean, the the you know, for me, the role is you know, a couple different things: a guy who can get on base, a guy that you want up as many times as possible in a game, right? That's why you put guys at the top of the order. Um, good base runner, maybe not base stealer anymore, uh, but yet, uh, you know, a smart player, understands the game, understands, uh, you know, what he needs to do uh, to start a game. And it could be anything. It could be first pitch hack, homer. Uh, could be, you know, get him in a, a given a great at bat to uh, to see a number of pitches that the guys following him see, you know, early in the game from the starting pitcher. So it's you know, many things that could occur, and, and Charlie's capable of all those things. And as a run producer, we saw him 103 RBIs sure. from the leadoff spot a few years ago, but now behind him, sure, you have. Yeah. A DH instead of a pitcher, yeah. which gives him yeah. an opportunity. Yeah, you to have another hitters. position player that, when the order comes around, that right. you know the guys who hit, you know, one and two potentially have guys on base at a at a more common rate. Now, does the DH take away from the uh, type of guy? You, like we used to have a stereotype leadoff hitter. Right. No, I think those days are gone. The DH takes that away, right? It gives you more leverage. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know whether I think that yeah the the prototypical leadoff hitter I I think is still can be defined, but it's hard to find that guy, right? If you if you go to the highest standard, right? Ricky Henderson, probably the most prolific leadoff hitter of all time, Hall of Famer. Uh, but you know Trey Turner. I'm a pretty good leadoff hitter. I mean, in my mind, my I don't know what they're going. I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, he led off the other day against in a spring training game, but you know, he sort of fits that prototypical type. Probably more so. Probably more so because he's got power. I mean, the old school was you know a little pesky guy. Sees a lot of pitches, takes fouls balls off. You know, maybe can run. I mean, you like a guy who can run, right? To to set the tempo for a game right off the bat. If he gets on, it puts pressure on the pitcher and catcher, uh, so, and the defense, but, you know, I mean, those type of players are the, the defined one, the definition is, the good ones are, like, really good. Yeah, it's almost like an ace, you don't have many aces, right. not many. Yeah. A couple of um, questions about leadoff. Uh, last year, when you guys got going offensively, part of that was Connor Joe at the top of the order. I don't right. know you can bat him anywhere. Yeah. Is he's pot yeah, he could lead off potentially against left-handed starters, maybe, if he's if he's in the lineup and he's swinging well. Because yeah, the guy who takes you know high on base percentage in the minors showed a nice on base percentage with us. The ability to hit and the ability to draw a walk. One guy's get on base. And if you talk to analytics, if you talk to analytics and quantitative analysis people, offense is based around on base percentage. Runs are scored by on base. The more people get on base. Do you have to talk to analytics guys to figure that out? Uh, I don't. <laughs> and um, I hope not. As you said, Charlie, not a base dealer at this point, but a pretty good runner. Is there any, if you do go in another direction, whether it's permanently or in some games, is there a thought of getting more speed at the top of the lineup? Is, would that be kind of a determining factor? Maybe if Hampy's playing well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hampy's, you know, we've hit Hampy laid off before, too. But Hampy's got to get on base at a higher rate than he's shown in his career, right? Last one with that is um, Charlie, if he's a leadoff guy, it, it takes him out of the middle of the order. Do you feel like it frees him up a little bit to... Probably a better question. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that matters to Charlie. I think Charlie has the same mindset. Uh, no matter where he hits. I think he hits to the game situation. 
I think that's the thing that stands out the most, you know, for me with Charlie, depending on the game situation, what he's trying to do. And there's a lot of game situations. I mean, if, if somebody leads off in front of Charlie and gets a double, Charlie's going to get the guy over. Uh, if there's a man on second with two outs, Charlie's going to try to get a hit to knock in the run. If there's a man on third with, with uh, less than two outs, Charlie's going to knock him in with either a hit, sack fly, if the infield's back. I mean, whatever the situation allows for. He's, a, he's probably one of our better situational hitters. He'll do what, what the game tells him to do. Let me ask you about a guy that uh, we really didn't see in camp, but obviously you're working with him. How Chris Olivares? What are you trying to do to get him big league speed? Well, you know, last year uh, was it was a tough for a tough year for him, just <clears throat> in the control grade. If you were to, on the scouting scale, mm -hmm. uh, we identified some things that <clears throat> in in the off season that we really wanted him to concentrate on as far as his delivery. Uh, we did those uh, in instructional league uh, down here in Arizona. Uh, you know, he took those to heart this off season, <clears throat> and hopefully, it shows up. You know, in the minor leagues this year, he's got to throw strikes. He's got to throw strikes because the stuff plays. Yeah, and I, I understand, and I'd heard that he really took those to heart when you saw him in you know different drills here, whether it's live BP or whatever. You, do you feel like he's getting it? Yeah, he's, he's practicing. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Do you feel him in games down there now? Or yeah, I think now? he's uh, he had a little bit of a shoulder issue when he came into camp. Uh, that's been resolved. Um, I got to double check to see where he is, whether he's pitching this week. But I know he's very close to pitching in games if he hasn't already. I just want to ask about that. Never mind, I just forgot what I was going to do. I, uh, It'll come back to you. Bye. I have two more questions. Uh, one, uh, I talked to Peter Lambert this morning. Oh, that's, that's what it was. He said he's going to throw a live BP tomorrow. Uh, I know he made two big league starts last year. Tell me back from Tom and John. Where is he? Are you guys just being a little bit extra we're, cautious? You were being caught, that? yeah. Okay. I think, it, I mean, we're being extra cautious and also knowing that there's going to be an innings limit on Peter okay. this year, right? I mean, uh, you know, I don't see Peter uh, in a starting role grinding out, you know, 200 innings from where he was, you know, the previous couple of years. So right. uh, we'll be judicious with how we use Peter. That's a, but he's healthy. healthy. I mean, he, he's, he's healthy, yeah. And, but you're just being cautious. Yeah, he had a little, he had a little bit of an, uh, an elbow uh, flare up. I don't know if flare-up's the right word. He had, he had a little bit of elbow soreness uh, at the tail end of the lockout. Okay. And when he came in, we, we put him on a slower slower pace. And my other... And, he, and he's fine now. He feels really good. Okay, my other question for you. Uh, when you determine who's going to be your, your primary ninth inning guy or who's ever in the mix, you have a lot of pitchers on but, this. But, you know, obviously, you know, that can change yes. over time, sure. But you have a lot of pitchers on the staff, both starters and relievers, uh, who get a lot of ground balls, right? But do you need somebody in the ninth who can go get you the strike at when you need it? Is that in, in or, or part? the seventh or the eighth or the yeah. ninth? I mean, but you, especially you, the, you love strikeout bullpens, yes, right? Yes. I mean, you really But how are. critical is that? I don't know, it depends on it. it I don't know how critical it is, okay. percentage-wise. Uh, you need pitchers who get outs. Okay. The reason right? I ask. I is mean, yeah. I mean, every every pitcher is different. Because yeah, we can go back in the history of no, time. But, but Bard strikes out guys at a pretty high clip. Colby big time. used to, but in the last couple of years, not as much, and he's got more ground balls out. So I'm right. just wondering from yeah. the Rockies' philosophy. There's no. It depends on your personnel. Right. There's no like hard set philosophy. Uh, you like the strikeout, right? Uh, you know the whip sort of is important as a closer, okay. right? If if you if you walk guys, you better get the strikeout. Right. Uh, if you don't walk guys and you get your outs via the ground ball or the miss hit 
or the high fly ball. I mean, that counts too. So it's just really, it's about the, the talent of the pitcher and how he gets his outs and without having a run score or two runs or three, if he has a three run lead, right? Just to get it done. Uh, but generally speaking, the over the history of the game, you know, the best closers usually have strikeouts. Right. They usually have good stuff that produces the strikeout. Yeah. And that can come in a lot of different ways, right? Velocity, breaking pitch, split finger, slider, curveball, whatever, whatever it is. But that... You know, that enhances your chances because they're not putting the ball in play. Sure. But but we've also seen, you know, closers who it, – it's rare that you have a closer who doesn't have a great strikeout rate. It's usually pretty good. doesn't have to be exorbitant, right. but it has to usually be pretty good because you, you never know what might happen, right? Blooper, you know, borderline 3-2 pitch. It's a ball walk. Guy gets on, error. Hit by pitch, and and in a one run game, you know it's you know in a ground ball somewhere, you know maybe you don't turn the double play, guy goes to second, blue pit, tie game. I mean, you know, right. so the strikeout does come in handy, but but between our, I would get to, I'm sorry, yeah, no, but to get to your guy, I mean, you know, Bard, Colomay, Stevis, those three guys who have save history, and we'll you know we'll figure that out. Sorry. I'm sorry, Samantha. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so thinking about Willie McIver, and he performed really well in Spokane, ran into a little bit of a rough patch in Hartford, rough patch in Hartford but yeah. still like made the Futures game last year, What or was selected, I should say. Right. What were some things that you have seen out of him that you really like, and what do you think he needs to take the next step? Really like uh, the improved defense. I think, first of all, you look at catcher guy, he's got to play defense. That's imperative. So our catching guys, uh, Redmond, Munoz, Stripmeyer, all our guys who've worked with Willie have been impressed with the improved defense. Receiving, blocking, throwing, all looks good. Uh, good head on his shoulders, bright guy. Uh, so the ultimately the, the pitch calling, the pitcher-catcher relationship, uh, all those intangibles that go into a good catcher working with a pitching staff are are in place and are, I mean, in a really good spot. So we won't have to worry. I th- we won't have to worry about Willie on that end, which is great. And he's he's learned a lot the last couple of years. Uh, offensively is where it has to improve a little bit, and he's uh, stronger this this spring. He had a good off season. Again, you know, hitters continue to uh, make adjustments with their swing based on uh, what they learn from facing better quality pitching, right? In A ball, pitchers aren't as good because they're in A ball. Mm-hmm. Get to double A, they're a little better. Uh, they're a little better in triple A. But again, that you get to triple A in our, in our environment and altitude and Albuquerque and uh, you know, you really have to have a critical eye on, the, on an offensive player. You really do, and subjectively, you also have a. You got to understand on the pitching side too, what you're seeing from there. So, but I think overall, you know, Willie's offense has to uptick a bit. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thank you.